The production process of wire ropes at Dyco Corp begins with automatic measuring and cutting using the auto measuring machine. The cut wires are then stored in an automatic rack system. Next, the wires are held in place by a triangular vise and processed on the 3000 topless machine. A Tellurit brand fusing machine is used to fix the ends securely. For manual hand splicing and thimble eye formation, skilled workers perform hand braiding. The ropes are then tested for strength using a vertical Amsler tensile tester. Finished ropes are coiled and arranged on a turntable. This process enables the production of ultra-high strength and low-rebound wire ropes, as well as super-fiber slings. The CNC lathe first rough turns the screw blank, shaping the outer profile. Next, a groove is precisely machined along the length. The screw flight is then formed by helical cutting. Finally, threading and fine finishing are completed to achieve the required precision and surface quality. The wire rope is inserted into the ferrule, then positioned in the 6,000 kN one-column hydraulic swagging machine. The press activates, compressing the ferrule onto the rope. After swagging, the finished sling is removed for inspection and further processing. The process begins with hot steel billets entering the first two high shiftable breakdown housingless mill stands, where initial shaping occurs. The semi-processed section then passes through 10 continuous universal and two high mill stands, gradually reducing in size and refining the profile. These stands ensure precise dimensions and consistent surface finish. After rolling, the sections move to the multi-pitch straightener, which aligns them for accurate geometry Finally, finished profiles are guided through a magnetic stacking system that automatically collects and organizes them into bundles for further handling or shipment. Throughout the process, synchronization between components ensures high throughput and precision, reflecting advanced engineering and automation in FICO's medium section mill installed in Iran. Consulting, pattern making, core making, molding, melting, casting, fettling, coating, heat treatment, machining, and final assembly. Galvanized steel sheet is automatically fed into RBT pipe rolling mill, rolled into seamless rectangular drainage pipe, then hydraulically bent to form front, side, and combined corrugated elbows to ensure rigidity and leak-free performance. The steam turbine repair process begins with the removal of the turbine casing using overhead cranes. Workers disconnect piping and electrical systems before lifting the upper casing. Next, the rotor is carefully extracted and placed on stands for inspection. Technicians disassemble components, clean surfaces, and measure clearances. Damaged parts are repaired or replaced Blade rows are inspected for wear, and any fouling is removed. Bearings and seals are checked and refurbished. After thorough cleaning and reassembly of internal components, the rotor is reinstalled. Technicians align the rotor precisely within the casing. The upper casing is lowered back into position and bolted down. Piping and electrical systems are reconnected. Final steps include alignment checks, 
torque verification, and system testing to ensure proper function before returning the turbine to service. Two workers install the railway track using specialized tools. First, they position the rails on the sleepers with the help of a mechanical clamp. One worker controls the clamp, while the other adjusts the rail alignment. Next, they secure the rails using fasteners, tightening them with a power wrench. The process continues as they move forward, repeating the same steps, placing, aligning, and fastening the rails. They work efficiently in coordination, minimizing the need for heavy machinery. The lightweight tools and teamwork allow for fast and precise rail installation. This method streamlines the process and requires only two skilled workers. Steel rope is precisely wound into large coils using a grommet machine, ensuring consistent diameter, tight tolerance, and certified quality for heavy-duty offshore lifting. Pickling, drawing, annealing, galvanizing, coiling. BMC Double Column CNC Machining Center, with a workpiece load of up to 18, operates with high precision for heavy industrial parts. A large workpiece with a large weight is fed into the machine. The machining process begins with positioning using a Mitsubishi controller. All axes X 4200 mm, Y 2700 mm, and Z 1000 mm move linearly, guided by Heidenhain scales for precision. The 10,000 revolutions per minute spindle, together with the universal side head, performs milling operations on the workpiece. The wide distance between the columns allows easy access and stable machining. This process demonstrates the ability to cut accurately and powerfully for oversized components in heavy industry. The hull sections are carefully aligned and approached. Preparations and paneling are performed. Caulking ensures watertight sealing. Welders then join the hull parts through precise welding. Finally, the submarine's hull is fully united, completing the final assembly stage. The Acryl USA tandem press brake begins by positioning two synchronized hydraulic units along a 58-foot bed to handle extra-long workpieces. A large steel pole is loaded onto the machine using multiple overhead cranes and is carefully aligned along the bending axis. Operators use handheld controllers to manage positioning while CNC controls precisely adjust the ram stroke and back gauge position for accurate bending. Once the pole is secured, the machine initiates a synchronized downward motion of both rams to apply even pressure across the full length of the workpiece. This coordinated bending ensures uniformity and prevents material warping. Throughout the process, real-time sensors monitor force distribution and RAM parallelism. After the initial bend, the pole is repositioned for further forming. The back gauge system automatically repositions itself Based on the programmed bend sequence, the machine performs multiple bends along different segments of the pole, maintaining tight tolerances. Upon completion, the finished pole is removed using cranes. The tandem system allows handling of oversized components efficiently, minimizing manual labor while maximizing precision and throughput. 
The entire operation is a demonstration of heavy-duty forming capability with advanced automation and control. Crankshaft forging is mounted, aligned, rough turned, shoulders faced, journals shaped, intermittent cutting handled, precision turning complete. The stainless steel pipe is securely clamped into the hydraulic bending die of the Bailey RDB 500. The operator selects the bending angle, and the hydraulic arm gradually rotates the die. As the pipe bends, the machine maintains steady pressure to ensure smooth curvature The bend progresses to 180 degrees, allowing for material spring back. The entire process takes approximately 36 seconds, producing a precise bend without mandrel support, suitable for heavy gauge applications seen in shipbuilding and structural fabrication. The steel lifting sling production begins with engineering and precise planning. Materials imported from Asia are just in time delivered to the facility. Skilled workers and machines collaborate to fabricate the 61 meters x 0.36 meter slings. Each sling is meticulously assembled, spliced, and finished to ensure strength and uniformity. Throughout the process, quality and supply chain control are maintained to meet strict specifications and delivery deadlines. The steel plates are first prepared and rolled into curved sections. These sections are welded together to form large cylindrical cans. Each weld is inspected using non-destructive testing methods to ensure quality The cans are then assembled and welded into complete tower sections. After assembly, the surface is sandblasted to remove impurities and improve coating adhesion. A multi-layer protective coating system is applied to prevent corrosion, Internal pedestals, ladders, and other components are installed inside the tower sections. Final inspections and quality checks are performed before the tower sections are shipped for installation. The production of steel pipes at Francini Acciai begins with the selection and cutting of high-quality ingots using saw cutters and an oxy-fuel machine. The heated ingots are then forged using open die presses, undergoing operations like upsetting, stretching, punching, and mandrel forging. Heat treatment follows, where furnaces reach up to 1,150 degrees Celsius and quenching is performed in water or polymer. Afterward, CNC machines perform rough and fine machining. Quality control involves ultrasonic testing, dimensional checks, magnetic particle inspection, and Brunel hardness testing. The finished pipes are packed and shipped worldwide, ensuring compliance with international standards through certified systems and rigorous internal inspections. Drilling begins with crews working in shifts around the clock. The driller controls the platform, while roughnecks handle pipe connections. Drilling mud is continuously mixed and monitored to cool the bit and bring cuttings to the surface. Each 35-foot pipe section is drilled, unscrewed, and replaced with a new one using tongs and the Kelly drive. This process repeats over 230 times until reaching 8,100 feet. Then the well is flushed and all pipe is tripped out. A logging crew inserts a probe to analyze underground formations. If results are good, production casing is installed section by section. Cement is pumped to seal the casing. 
Large generators and diesel engines power the entire operation. Once complete, the rig is moved off-site and the well is prepared for fracking. The steel plate is first positioned between three large rollers. The top roller applies downward pressure while the bottom rollers rotate, drawing the plate inward. As the plate moves through the rollers, it gradually bends into a curved shape. The operator adjusts the rollers to control the curvature precisely. Multiple passes are performed to achieve the desired radius. Once rolled, the plate is rotated and fed through the rollers again if a full cylinder or tighter curve is needed. During the process, alignment and shape are visually inspected. The final result is a uniformly curved steel plate ready for further fabrication or welding. Crankshaft finishing involves rare hell bite machining and polishing techniques to achieve micron level precision and visible to the naked eye The production process begins with the extraction of the heated ingot from the pit furnace using a clamp bridge. The ingot is placed on the approach table and fed into a reversible duo rolling mill powered by two 3000 HP motors. This mill shapes the ingot into a square billet of 220 by 220 millimeters. The billet then moves to the exit table, where it is oxy-cut to length, and stacked on ripiolita. It is reheated in a pusher furnace, then evacuated and transferred to the entry table of another reversible duo mill. After further rolling, the product passes through a cutting saw, an evacuation and cooling grill, and a bar straightener. The straightened bars are then subjected to conditioning and ultrasonic inspection. Finally, the finished rolled steel, either as bars, billets, or flats, is ready for dispatch. The high-speed bandsaw cuts aluminum billets with full automation Billets are fed into the saw, where the blade advances at 1.8 inch slash sec. A 12 diameter billet is cut in just 11 seconds. The process produces a surface roughness of raw, 5 to 10 micrometers with a reduced kerf, minimizing chip waste. The automated line includes manipulators for billet handling, a marking system for identification, and a measuring device for dimensional checks. Cut billets are then automatically stacked and strapped. The entire cutting process is precise, fast, and integrated in compliance with Industry 4.0 standards. No Workpiece is positioned without screws, aligned Only the automatically, the modular zero clamp system free, offers the substantial advantage of a high degree of production flexibility. Tubes are cut and cleaned, then arranged into bundles. Tube sheets are drilled and tubes are inserted and welded. The shell is fabricated and cleaned before assembly. The upper and lower chambers are mounted. Tube bundles are installed into the shell. Finally, all parts are welded together and tested to ensure tightness and proper heat exchange function. 